exaggerated data, real world numbers, what the fuck? Hi everybody, Jim from Aerosports here. Welcome to another edition of Fast or Fiction. Um, a kind of an unplanned edition. I, uh, this wasn't a video I planned on bringing out. It's gonna be relatively short. But something happened in the world of cycling that I thought really worth addressing because it really speaks to what this channel is about. What, what we're trying to do with Fast or Fiction. And what we are trying to do is give you the consumer, uh, you the viewer, good data, like what, what really works and what doesn't actually work as well as maybe is claimed. And so, you know, not everybody's going to like us, not every product's going to come out looking good, but we're going to give you real data. It's one of the reasons we test multiple athletes, right? I could go out and test something and those are my results. Do they mean anything to you? Not necessarily. However, if we test you know three four six athletes and we start seeing some consistency and results then that can help you decide well hey yeah maybe i should try this or maybe i should uh buy this because it seems to work for most athletes or doesn't work for most athletes so that's what we're trying to do and and, and so what what really peaked what, what, what grabbed my interest i guess the best way to say it uh is that Specialized released a new road bike, their Tarmac SL8. It's the latest iteration in the Tarmac line. And I'm sure it's a fine bike. I have no idea. This is not a review of that bike. I haven't even seen the bike. Um, I'm sure it's great. The SL6 is still one of the greatest bikes uh, I've actually ridden. So, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. What I'm here to talk about is the data that Specialized released with it and the claims they made about the aerodynamics of the bike. Not because I think they were exaggerated, actually because I think they were real and I think they weren't exaggerated. There was no hyperbole. There was no radical claims about this bike. And I just really appreciated what I thought was a, a very honest attempt to give you the real numbers you, sh you should expect to experience from this bike. And, and it, unfortunately in this industry, there is a lot of hyperbole. There is a lot of exaggeration of numbers, wild claims about aerodynamic savings that, that really the, that most people are never going to see, especially when you start reading the fine print about how they got those numbers. So we want to get rid of that in the industry. We want to help get rid of that in the industry and, 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 and inform you as best we can. And so I thought it worth addressing and looking at the numbers that Specialized provided. So they do claim the SL8 is their most aero bike uh, as far as road bikes. They claim it's more aero than the than the you know aero specific uh, Venge bike that they no longer make. What Specialized is claiming is that their bike at 35 kilometers an hour, which I think is like 26 or 27, oh wait, 45 kilometers an hour, uh, which I think is 27 or 28 miles an hour. I forget where what I'll put it up on the screen here. Um, that it will save you 16 seconds over 40 kilometers or over about 25 miles. That's not a massive savings in drag. In fact, I'm gonna go over some numbers here in a moment that show you, hey, this is not a big drop in drag. It's a nice drop in drag and how they designed the bike and where they got those drag savings from make perfect sense to me. Um, but I just love the fact that they didn't say, hey, this, this bike is gonna change your life aerodynamically. No, they said, here's about what it's going to save you. So. 16 seconds, let's take a different look at that. If I were to put out 300 watts, and I realize most of you don't average 300 watts, but if I'm putting out 300 watts and uh, I'm going to do a flat 40 kilometer ride, how much does that bike have to save me to, to, to give me those 16 seconds? Let's take a look. So if my drag number on a bike is 0 0.3000, which is a pretty good drag number on a bike, by the way, on a road bike uh, anyways, um, but we're just using it because it's a nice round number. If that is my drag number, how low does that drag number have to get for me to go down or for me to save 16 seconds? Well, as it turns out, if I just go down to 0 0.2956, down from 0 0.3000, that saves me about 1.47%, about 4.4 watts, and there's my 16 seconds over 40 kilometers. Nothing extraordinary. 
it's a savings it's a marginal gain right we consider anything two percent or below to be a marginal gain and you hear marginal gains all the time that's how we define it here at faster fiction um, so but a good gain and again there were some more reasonable data they put out with it for instance they put out real world yaw numbers right so yaw is the the direction of wind that you're experiencing as you're riding down the road right so um so whether it's you know if, if there was no wind at all you would be experiencing zero degrees of yaw uh, then we can go out to five degrees or seven degrees or ten degrees or right directly from the side of, you know we can go all the way to 90 degrees if we wanted to what we've figured out and, and the data that's been gathered by multiple people around the world is over the last several years anyways is that we're not really experiencing as much yaw as we thought we were and in fact you're spending the overwhelming majority of your time uh, riding below 10 degrees of yaw and honestly to, to even consider anything above seven degrees of yaw you're probably wasting your time uh, trying to optimize for anything above that because that's pretty much what people are experiencing now this has a lot to do with how fast you're going through the wind how fast you're traveling down the road we're going to do a whole video explaining that it'll be really nerdy but it'll help things uh, make sense to you however for the most part most of us are not experiencing high degrees of yaw and and this is the exact data that specialized put out they went out and gathered yaw data themselves and it absolutely agrees with everything we've found and so that is a you know that, that that's great consistency and helps you the consumer understand what's really going on so fantastic data from specialized uh, on this and again very real numbers and that's what they tried to do is that hey we're going to make this bike faster uh, in the real world not just in a wind tunnel uh, we're, go we're doing it in the real world and that's what they did and and they did it by you know they sort of made the the nose of the bike uh, a little more arrow shaped and they made the stem and handlebar set up a little more arrow those are the first things to hit the wind uh, and the, so therefore that's the most important part of the bike along with the wheels right the, whatever hits the wind first is going to be most important everything after that is dirty air which again specialized uh, uh, explained in their release and and they're right everything back behind the front of that bike is not is no longer pure laminar flow it is it is disrupted wind um, from all the different shapes from you the rider from you pedaling so i just wanted to point that out to everybody thank you specialize for 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 putting out real data for putting out realistic data for not exaggerating numbers uh, numbers that you as the viewer that you as the consumer could believe and uh, i just personally really appreciated that so I wanted to point that out to everybody that's the whole point of this uh of, of this video um so i hope you liked it we have some cool stuff coming the calf sleeves were delayed because i wanted to include surface calf sleeves i really thought uh, making sure that we included that in the test was important because they are uh sort of very different than than other calf sleeves out there and from what i've been told test really fast so I thought the, the calf sleeve test would not be complete unless we, we had them in there. So uh, that's all we're waiting on is to finish up that testing and then that video will come out. Next week a video comes out that I, I'm not happy about putting out. It's going to be our first sort of, I don't know if it's negative, um, but it's a product that perhaps isn't performing as advertised. And so that one's coming out next week. Um, I've struggled with that one to be honest with you. I, I didn't want to put it out. but. There were some things that kind of compelled me to do it, and, and we'll explain that next week. So, um, so next week that video. Uh, I'm sorry to be cryptic on it. I'm just going to be for now, and then calf sleeves after that. So you'll see uh, you'll see uh, this video this week, and then the next two consecutive weeks we'll release videos uh, with with true data. We also heard you loud and clear on the sock videos that you want comparison testing. You want one brand versus another. And so that's what we're going to, to try and do as much as possible from now on is compare brands for you. Uh, so that's coming as well. All right. So there you go. Oh, hey, by the way, Specialized, that, that cool green, you know, uh, graphic showing where the wind hits the bike. Pay attention to what everybody's saying. And man, custom paint job, probably not a bad idea. Probably sell quick just my opinion. All right, guys, have a great day. Go be arrow, go be fast, and we'll see you next week.